Oh man, kind of a mess over here. Oh, hey guys, just cleaning up. I'm at the clinic today. I read a really interesting article here re recently on how the super rich, not even really the super rich, but those who have discretionary money and also have kids, they're taking their kids off of the screens because screens are everywhere, aren't they? So think about right now, you're watching this on a screen. Screens are on gas station pumps. I mean, right there, you're pumping your gas and there's a screen. There's screens in classrooms, in hospitals, in grocery stores. Screens are everywhere. But the rich are paying to not have the technology in front of them. The rich, those with discretionary money, are actually paying for interactions. And as a therapist who's a practice owner, I think there's a niche here. And I want you to comment down below on how you think you and I as practice owners can tap into this niche. These people who have discretionary money are willing to pay money for experiences, for their kids especially, but for themselves also. So the wealthy are actually paying for their children to play, to have real play, building blocks, imaginative play, doll houses, instead of screen time. They're putting their kids in private schools because those schools are touting that they don't use screens. They use real people. It's real interaction. Think about Montessori. Montessori is going to become a big, big factor in the near future, I think, because Montessori is so interactive. It's so imaginative. There's no screens. And that is where the wealthy are spending their money because they understand that screen time is the same for everybody. If you're poor, you still have a screen. You have a TV at least, but you probably have a smartphone. So if you're poor or you're rich, everything looks the same. Social media looks the same. Facebook doesn't look different for a rich person. Instagram doesn't look different for a rich person. No, it looks the same. But the social marker for success and for wealth is going to be human interaction. The social marker is going to be how appropriate can I or my kids have engagement with other people or interact in our environment. That's going to be the marker in the near future for that person has got money. That person is successful. It's not only going to be a marker for success, it's going to be a prerequisite for success. That person knows how to talk to people. That person knows how to put forth an idea in a conversation. They have more experience than just Facebook and Instagram. They actually know history. They can talk about the French Revolution. They can talk about nutrition. They can talk about their experience that they had at the museum earlier that day. They're having real life experiences. They're playing, their children are playing with toys to help them have imaginative play. And that makes connections in the brain that screens cannot make. It's going to have brain growth that people who are poor, who put their kids on a screen all the time, are not going to have. Okay, You're going to see a separation of those who have a lot of screen time and those who don't have a lot of screen time are going to be taking over the successful spots. Okay, So the poor... and the rich too, for that matter, if they're susceptible to it, are being trained to seek out the screen time. We, we're becoming addicted to the screens. So as a private practice owner, you and I can offer that real life interaction. We can offer human interaction. We just have to figure out how to do that. One idea I had was, what if I had a small group and we just played board games? four or five people, four or five kids, you know, maybe preteens, teenage kids, and I build it as a social interaction group. All we did was play a board game. What ideas do you have about social interaction? How can you get that message out to those who have discretionary money, to the wealthy, that they actually need to do this for their own kids? We need to start educating those who have discretionary funds that the human interaction the therapy that you and I provide is going to make their kids, their children, and themselves successful, okay? Now, what was interesting about this article is it actually 
cited an OT or mentioned an OT in there because it focused at first on this older gentleman who was homebound. He didn't have any family to check on him, but he had a tablet. And on that tablet was an app that could interact with him somewhat. I mean, it's just AI basically. So it was able to interact with him, but it was also just a tablet. It was just a screen. And so the OT was saying, well, this is just a tablet. We need real people to do social interaction. So it's very, it's kind of sad that that's what we're coming to, that it's all going to AI. It's all going to robots. There's a niche for you and your private practice for those who are, have the discretionary money to pay the money for the social interaction, for the real life human interaction. That's coming, my friend. I promise you. All right. I got a free webinar coming up on how to start a practice. Go over to startatherapypractice.com backslash webinars. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. It's called Start a Therapy Practice. And if you have any questions, email me, scott at startatherapypractice.com. Until next time, Godspeed to you and your practice.